Welcome everyone. Uh, today we will see together uh, CMS virtual visits. Um, uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce you uh, to all the people here uh, in the CMS control room. We start by uh, Naomi and Zoltan. Both are our, uh, uh, they are from Hungary and they are the, the main responsible on the virtual Who? visits. <laughs> and technical. the technical uh, <laughs> visit, the virtual visit, sorry. And uh, we have also here with us Mohammed, who Hello. is uh, from Egypt and he's a PhD student at the University of Antwerp, um, as well as me. I am also a PhD student from uh, University of Antwerp and I'm from uh, Tunisia originally. And you are Haifa. And I'm Haifa, yes, <laughs> most important thing. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, everyone. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, um, as you may know, here we have um, the CMS control room. We are in uh, CC in France. Uh, the CMS control room is where we control uh, is the is uh, the room where we control uh, where we control our CMS detector, which is uh, uh, seated hundred meter underground. Here you can see um, the CMS experiment here. Um, uh, exactly yeah, in mouses. the French countryside, or you can see the mouse is moving. And as I said, uh, we have uh, our uh, CMS uh, detector sitting 100 meter underground, uh, or we will uh, see it uh, together um, uh, today here, where you can see the mouse is moving here. So we are in the, uh, you can see that we have also Atlas from the other oh, side, but <laughs> Atlas is a bit far away uh, from here. Yeah. So it's in the Swiss side. Uh, just across uh, the diameter. Exactly, just across the diameter, which is a diameter of 27 kilometers. So it's quite a big. It's the circumference. Yeah, circumference. <laughs> so, yes, sorry about that. Yes. That's the FCC. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but <laughs> if you are sitting in the plane and see from the above, you would not see this yellow ring, it's just underground by exactly. 100, it's 100 meters. Meter, yes. yeah, and you can see situation. in the last picture in the background, you see the Alps and uh, oh, yeah, oh, we just, see yeah, it. it's yeah, very nice. Give back the, yeah. the share, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's yes, yeah, see in the background the Alps and the, the white peak is at the moon, too. Exactly, which I, I wish to visit one, yeah. <laughs> one time, here but yeah, Geneva. the tallest mountain in the Alps, yes, yeah. and even you can see the Geneva Lake. Yes, uh, exactly. The I large can see local it, area yeah. and the airport, and the airport, and the airport behind see. the LCB. And we have two other main targeting experiments, Alice and LCB, just yeah. near to the certain main buildings. And there we have the official main buildings and the few labs beside Atlas. Yeah. And yeah, you can see all this ring, and we are here in the French side on the left hand side at CMS. So welcome to you all. And I hope to enjoy the, the visit. I will be your mobile guide. Exactly. However, I cannot see from the my glass now <laughs> because <laughs> of the mask. <laughs> okay, so I think I can move now. Yeah, yeah. And you can, you can will run be around the with you for the yeah. surface. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Please. You will see me in a few minutes. Yeah. So in the meantime, the control room, we can. Yes, we can. With. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in a few minutes here, the control room is where we did get the control of detector, means that we, uh, we are looking uh, for a good data taken and the detector is in a good state. Mohammed, in a, in a minute, will show you all the, all the, uh, the, 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 the desks from where we detect, uh, control the detector. Maybe you can oh, share yeah, the, sorry, the, I, I the should, screen. I should make them. Exactly. Uh, Here is, the, yeah, here is the, the shift uh, leader um, desk. The shift leader is uh, the person that it's looking and is uh, the leader of the uh, of the people that they are looking uh, on a good data taking. Now we don't have a shift through in the control room because uh, we don't have actually a data taking period. So we are just closing the detector. Yeah, we so. are closing <laughs> the detector. Exactly. We are preparing for run three as uh, 
some of you may know. So uh, yeah, we are uh, just uh, doing the commissioning work on the detector without any data taken for this period. Uh, so we have we have more posts, yeah. Yes, exactly. That's uh, that's the data quality monitoring. Yeah, uh, that is off for now. Yeah, exactly. Since there is no data where we are sitting. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> where we are sitting? That's the bigger desk. Uh, sorry for the the, the strong light uh, that's needed. Um, and Did also we that? have a post for the data taking itself. Exactly the data activity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here we can say here the war started. started. And uh, yes, <laughs> of CMS. Yes, exactly. When we push the button and we start everything. See, wait, this is the start. Of course, yes, it's a pretty long thing. I mean, yeah. pretty busy thing. Of course, of course. And we here have you can manage. Million channels. Yeah. Even here, you can manage which kind of detector will participate or which not. Okay, and uh, you can stop the run and you can choose what kind of trigger and so on. And we'll explain to you later what the meaning of trigger, what the meaning of each sub detector and etc. So I can continue to this DSS panel. This is more related to safety, which we have like some indicator about the status of the sector. This is all green, everything is fine. <laughs> But when it's turned to red, so it's emergency. And also we have some like switches, which hard switch to, in case uh, of emergency, we need to close some of the detector, so switch it off. And also we have a bottom of beam. Once we clicked on that, I don't know if you can see it or not. So we inhibit the injection, but right now the beam is supported because we are on long shutdown. And because of the safety is very, very important to CMS, you can see how large the disks of all the safety. So this is all safety related. And detector control. Yeah. And detector control, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it started to count how many people inside. If you make any, if you wanted to do any announcement underground or even on the surface, some special devices to measure the dose that the people working underground have been taken and some detector control as Zoltan said and here also some safety uh, screen alarms if we got any alarms so yeah the the one sitting here has a long shift <laughs> and has a big operation so this mainly the summary of control room we also have another part here which were our experts of detectors are setting, but they are not here now except one, <laughs> but mainly because we have the, the long shutdown. But I promise you, if you're coming two weeks from now, we will hard, we'll have the test beam and you will see this control, this room is full of people, don't worry. So yeah, this was the summary of uh, control room. And now we can move on to go on our tour underground so mohammed now is um entering to the uh is uh, going uh, underground and uh, you will see he will cross uh, a first door um right now now here we have here we have a big picture of CMS where you can see all the persons that participated in the past and now. And um, the I think we have a lot more people than, than exactly. Only. We have something like 5,000. Um, this installation uh, was, was, a, was a very interesting, well, the photoing. The, if you get closer to the picture, you will see that the ladies are oh, photographed nice. in. Uh, in a studio behind a, a white or, or light uh, uh, background and the boys well actually i think there are ladies right. as well among them uh, are were photographed on a on a christmas party okay <laughs> interesting i remember i remember the photo taking that's why i okay. took it over okay and uh, uh, this collage was made uh, uh, 
to again to tribute to the CMS that that this is not just the detector but this is people as well. Yeah. And maybe more people than than the hardware, you know. Yeah. That we are one family. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, so, so yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hi guys, sorry for interrupt. So now I'm going to enter the first level or the first gate. Okay, no, I have to come back. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is this is a very complicated uh, yes. uh, uh, pad, uh, full with uh, with uh, uh, infrared gates uh, that that uh, that are counting that they're ensuring that only one person goes through. Um, actually, there is also a, an iris scanner in there. Yes, yes. this one. Uh, this. Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> So this eye scanner is just to make sure that the person that is entering is you and um, to confirm that the person with, this, with the dosimeter is the same person that is entering, um, the, uh, entering uh, through the door. So this is an extra security step um, that uh, we put in place, right? Yeah. And also that you mentioned before, Sultan, is that this eye scanner also um, detects your blood. Exactly. So, so if you have uh, any... Any flashback from the the very old movie Angels and Demons? Yes. Uh, the iris scanner there was a model that we used that time. Yes. That I, I that was a fancy design. I loved it. Uh, but with re with respect to that one, this measures both irises and the blood circulation in them. If you remember the movie, you know what I mean. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but just something for the audience. Just please note that the color of the door of the gates we just passed through. Oh yeah, yes, exactly. Because there will be another question to you later. That's what I like about the visit, by the way, to ask to interact with the audience. So maybe in the visits you will hear a question, and I will wait your answer. So the first question for you: the gate, the the gate color. Okay. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, so I just yeah. would like to I just would like to remind the audience that that you are allowed to ask question, you are exactly. allowed to, to, to cut into our speech. Okay. This is a virtual tour and not a presentation. Yes. yes. So please feel free and don't hesitate to ask questions. Exactly. So now you see that Mohammed is waiting for the elevator and uh, he will go underground. Um, and very probably we are going to lose him. Exactly. So <laughs> I need the connection. <laughs> <laughs> but not forever. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so obviously in the elevator shaft, uh, the, the connection is very flaky. Mm -hmm. On the way down, we used to lose the connection. On the way up, we usually we, we get we, we keep the connection. This is uh, this depends on the on the, the roaming conditions okay. between Switzerland and France. Underground, we have a Swiss 4G network. Yeah. On the surface, we have a, a French one. Yeah. Um, if we use that, because the, the Wi-Fi is obviously uh, obviously out during, uh, during the journey down, downstairs. Of course, underground in the experimental cavern, we have a Wi-Fi um, and the underground team will We'll choose which one is the better exactly connection. But anyway, uh, during the the elevator travel, you have only 4G. Yeah, and Indeed. you you suffer from the the roaming uh, algorithms. But that's okay. <laughs> So now, uh, Mohammed, as I said, he's going in the ground. So one thing to say um, before um, he comes back is that uh, the underground area is uh, mainly divided in two. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the ca experimental cavern and the service cavern. We yeah. will start first with um, the service cavern, which is uh, the first um, uh, place on our way. And uh, the main idea to have these two separate areas is that um, in the service cavern, we put a lot of electronics um, that uh, we need maybe uh, during the data taking, because once we have a beam, um, it's not possible anymore to enter to the experimental area due to the radiation. So what we want, so what the, the main idea is to put this electronics in the service cover in case if there is a problem, they need to change a cable, they don't have to stop the experiment and the data taking to change one cable, Usually right? Usually we can take visitors as well there. 
during data faking. This exactly. is not considered as a radioactive array. Exactly, exactly. But I think after 30 minutes from the beam uh, that we don't have a beam anymore, we can answer even, the even before. The so the radiation in the cavern, in the experimental cavern, is 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 very much different from point to point. Yes. And those areas where we used to go are pretty low. It yes. is pretty low. Uh, in the forward region, of course, it is it is high. high. Uh, therefore, the access time after the the beam off might be different. Might be yeah. different. But anyway, there is a there is a procedure when we go in. First, the radio protection expert goes in and and Check. measures the radioactivity exactly. at the area where, where work is supposed to be done. I, I did it many times. OK, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can imagine. <laughs> OK, so uh, let me see if they are. Oh, they are not back yet. Um, OK, let's hope that we get back. In the meantime, why don't we talk about the detector itself? I yes, why not? Nice, uh, nice pictures. Yes. Yeah, let me just give back the this one yes so uh, as you can see here we have our cms uh, detector you can see um actually our cms detector is compact million solono with compact because actually we have a lot of sense material and uh, uh it's a, it's a big detector but comparing to the material that we have uh, it's actually very compact uh detector millions because we have a lot of uh, million chambers that are using the detector mm -hmm. And we have also the solenoid, which is a main uh, part of our detector that we will see it later in, the, in the, I think we are closing so that we will we, not be able to They, can, be, to they see can see it from the negative end and probably they are one of the last visits. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> you are this. lucky to, <laughs> to arrive at this uh, So as I see moment. they are back, let's just give back the view to Sorry. them. Yes, they are back. Yeah, I think I... I give them the full yeah. dance floor. We can discuss the detector <laughs> later. Yes, exactly. Minutes. Yeah. So, hello, everyone. Sorry <clears throat> for this cutting. It just was a connection issue. But now we are in the room. We called it counting room, which contains electronics. And we called it racks, which have the electronics of uh, related to each sub detector. It's uh, like trigger. I don't know if you speak already about trigger. But if not, I no, can... No, not yet. No, not yet. Not Go yet. ahead. Ah, perfect. Okay, so uh, I can give a brief uh, or summary what kind, what is the trigger. So when the LHC is running and accelerating the particles, we have many collisions inside at certain points, like CMS or Atlas or so on. So the number of collisions, you may have around 40 million collisions per second, which is a very, very huge number. It's corresponding to around 40 terabyte per second. So think of your computer or your own laptop. If it's about like one terabyte, we would need like 40 laptop as yours gathering together in one place per second, not per day, per second, which is impossible. We cannot do that at all and very, very expensive. So the idea is, or the question is, do we need all these collisions? Sorry, do we need to do all these collisions? No, because some of them are already has been studied for a decade at other detectors, LHC or whatever. So the idea is to filter these collisions and to keep only the interesting uh, part or interesting events, which maybe contain uh, particles we interested to study like Higgs boson. So what we do is we have a filter system or we called it here a trigger. Hello. Which divided? I'm sorry. Hi. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, of course. Go ahead. Yes, please. No, it's actually the technical question. How do you cool down this room? So we took the elevator. I don't know if you see the elevator before or not, but I can go back to the well, elevator. Well, we lost you in the elevator. So yeah, uh, no, no, the detector. This. Uh, uh, computing system room, this is right. So actually, yes, this this system, these racks, what that you see, are water cooled racks. Uh, and also, what you, what we do, the 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 room is also uh, air conditioned. Uh, anyway, we have no other choice because the underground area 
needs a forced air circulation. Otherwise, at some point, we all would die. Exactly. Uh, so um, during this air circulation, we make the air, uh, the air conditioning as well. And in these racks, we, we also have uh, an air circul uh, water circulation to cool them down. Yes, you, if you look into a rack, you might see the, the water pipes. Okay, maybe not here. Not here, no. Yeah, from the back, I think you, yeah. you should see. Okay, anyway, what you, what you show now is probably the first step at, at the CMS, where we yeah. get the gating, where we get the, everything in order to, to start the measurement at the, at the beam. Uh, Beam crossing, yes. bunch crossing. All those are optical fibers. And obviously, the bunch crossing information we get from LHC. Exactly. So they tell us when we have to to open the gates of, of the of the detector data taking. Yeah. Uh, and that rack was responsible for that, and that's where the the story begins. Yes. Indeed. All the others now it is probably uh, now it is probably the trigger part of the detector. This is a DAC and DAC. Yeah, yep. TCDS. So this is data acquisition system where uh, as uh, as Zoltan said, it's all everything starts there, the data taken yeah. and uh, yeah. the storage that uh, actually what is very important that uh, each sub detector has different time period to to create the data. And the DAQ, one of the DAQ's most important role is to synchronize them exactly. to build up an event. Exactly. So that's, uh, uh, and that should be done extremely fast. Exactly. So one, of the, one of the most, uh, most important things what we used to, to, to check before we start the data taking period is this latency time, how long it takes a detector to produce a data from the particle crossing. So yeah, as Zoltan was saying, this is the racks, and you can figure out from the name of the racks or the, the label on the racks what this racks for. So this DSS CMS, which detector safety system. So this rack belongs to the detector safety system, and etc. So uh, these I just yellow, wanna... these these orange stripes are yes. often referred to these racks. Uh, actually, the meaning of these orange stripes is that if we have a general power cut in that, use by let's yeah. say a, a problem these racks remain on exactly because they are exactly. responsible yeah. for the safety of the detector or safety of the personnel in this case the detector safety so exactly. obviously obviously they should be on always always even yeah. if when there is a power cut to general power cut yeah. so if you yeah. poke into these racks you have to be you have to yeah. be uh, uh, warned or, or you have to be aware that uh, uh, that they are on. On, exactly, all the time. Yes. So yeah, if I may return back to the point which I stopped at uh, the trigger. So- Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, to continue, course, yes. Yeah, to continue the trigger. So we reached the point that do we have, do we need all this 40 million collision per second to keep it and record it? The answer no, because already some of them or a lot of them already has been studied for decades. So the idea to keep only the collisions, which we can use and analyze, and it might contain some interesting particle like Higgs boson and cetera, or new physics. So what we are doing, we have like a filter system, or we call it here the trigger system, based on two steps. The first steps we call the level one trigger, which is a hardware trigger because this 30 million of collisions, it's happening in one second. And you can say it's like around 1 million collisions per 25 nanoseconds, which is, time, which is the time of each proton bunch. So you need to have a decision within a microsecond about to keep this collision or not. So we have a level one trigger, which is based on hardware, and it's super fast. Within a microsecond, it takes a decision to keep the collision or not. And it could reduce the 40 million events to 100,000 events per second. But still, 100,000 events per second is too much to record and to save. So what we have next, 
we another trajectory we called it a high level trajectory which is the second step where it based on fully computing programming code the traditional computing programming code okay and it can reduce first it has a longer time so it can reduce from 100,000 events per second to only 1,000 events per second. So you can imagine that from 40 million collision per second, you end by 1,000 collision per second. So this is the first step of data taking of CMS. And it's very, very critical because once you decide to throw away these collisions, you will never recover it back or you'll never get it back. So this uh, was a brief summary of the trigger we have at CMS. Now I'm uh, moving out from counting room. And the area we are now, we called it service cavern, where we have two cavern underground. The first one is service, which contains all the electronics. And the second one is experiment. What do you think why we have two cavern underground? Why just not have one cavern and uh, having all the detector, the CMS detector inside? And that's it. Why would Indeed, we, we have already we have already answered this question? Uh, sorry, probably <laughs> sorry, you were, you were disconnected that time. <laughs> However, what I would like to bring up is what is behind you, the color. Yes, the LHC. So first, this door. Yeah, the door. Yeah, exactly. Behind yes, behind this door, you have what uh, we were discussing in the beginning, the LHC tunnel which is using, so, yes. So you remember, I mean, the audience remembers the color. Yes. What was the yes, color yes. upstairs? The color, so back to the color. Do you remember what the color was upstairs? Is there anyone remember? I cannot see the answer, so. <laughs> no, me neither, me neither. Hello, Kazakhstan. Do you remember the color upstairs? And he scanned his eyes inside yeah, the door. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes. So anyway, it was it green. Was green. Exactly. Yes, it was green. Okay. But here the color is red. So what would mean that the gate to have a color green? That anyone, okay, the training people can pass this door. Okay. But when the color is red, you cannot pass this door. And once you did, something should happen. In that case, if you pass this door and the LHC is running, the LHC will stop directly, immediately, and the beam will be apported. Okay, that was the right. The... You have a camera, so indeed uh, uh, everything is filmed on your right. Uh, yes. And and of course, if you do such, uh, you have to have a good uh, yeah reason. You have you have a good reason or a good uh, good uh, uh, tale to tell. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. So red means this always one. red. Red means yes. always red. If you go across this door, even now when there is no beam, we lose the so-called patrol. Yeah. So we, we lose the confidence, the official confidence that that zone is empty. Yep. Uh, that means that we have to, to, to send a team there to, to check. Oh, yeah. Actually, this zone behind is it looks something like this poster. Uh, this is a full size poster, yeah. so exactly. <laughs> uh, that that's the that's the only way how we can show the that zone yes. to the visitors. That belongs to a completely yeah. different administration, and then yeah. uh, obviously, uh, obviously they are much more busy with the operation of the, exactly. of this yeah. and to answer and to make business. So yeah, another thing I can show you here, well, it's a bit out of date, but I can show you in the past, in the bottle, okay? Uh, yeah, all this daily C was feeded by this bottle. You can see how this bottle was. This is a hydrogen bottle or a proton bottle, which feeds all the LHC with the protons. And if you wanted to know how we got this, almost speed of light or accelerating the particles. So it's not directly accelerated. It's go step by step. Also, it's a bit uh, out of date. It should be in Act 4. But we would start from here. 
and uh, put the proton, inject the proton. And then we have the PS, which is proton cyclotron. And then we have another big ring, which is SPS, it's a super proton cyclotron. And then the proton go to the large LHC with the Large Hadron Collider. So you can see it's quite old accelerator. So it's 1959. And at the time you can consider it as the, the, the largest accelerator in the world. But then you got another one, which around 1976, also you consider at the time. So maybe after like 20 years from now, we will consider LHC is the old accelerator we had before, and we would had mm. more fast and more energetic accelerator. Mm. But the question also, I think Zoltan like this question, why we have this, all these steps to accelerate the proton? Why would we just like inject the proton direct to the LHC and get the high uh, speed? So the answer for that, think about your car, your manual car. Do you directly go to the, the fourth gear? No, you, you go step by step. The first, the second, the third. You can drive on the third gear. You can start your engine on the third gear, but we would not recommend that for you because it will hurt the engine itself, okay? So here is the, is the same idea that we have like gears, it's accelerators, and we go accelerating the particle uh, or the proton step by step from this one to this one, okay? To get the optimistic uh, accelerating or the optimistic energy we would look for, okay? Yeah, exactly, so you, exactly. Yeah. if you would. So you can see that in the LINAC, in the very beginning, uh, uh, the, the, the beam is, uh, um, is, is, is slow, too, too, too slow and by the end, it is very super relativistic. Uh, if you want to have a, a, an accelerator or build an accelerator to have a sub-relativistic -realist, uh, relativistic and a super-relativistic particle for both, you can do, but probably you will lose too much particles. Exactly. So the, the effectivity, okay. efficiency of, the, of the, the accelerator will not be as good as in this case. We, we are in a lucky position because we still have these accelerators from the past, so we Yes. Instead of dismantling them, we're just reusing them. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So now we have well, another gate. <laughs> <laughs> what is the color? <laughs> so, yeah. So the color here is yellow, which means that this like there is some cases you can pass now when it's general, but there are other cases once it's turned to red, so it's closed and sometimes it's automatic and restricted. So only in some special cases, you can pass through this door. But once the CMS is operating and turning on, and if you pass this door as it, it was happening with the red door, so it will, the power will cut down and we, the beam will be apported for the safety of the people. That's why we have different color for different gates, okay? So now I'm going to pass by my dosimeter. And I have to keep the camera down because the reader can count the camera is another person and we don't want to do that. And doing the uh, eye scan. Sorry. So Mohammed oh. now is heading to the experimental cavern. Show you our yeah, okay. beautiful detector. Oh yeah. I once. hope he's going to be like <laughs> Exactly, once um, he managed to cross the door. My glasses was... <laughs> I made his I access today, so, well, yesterday even, so he should be able to go through. <laughs> so yeah, thanks to Nomi to help for help. Well, anyway, that's a safety measure that we have yes. two people Indeed. in that crew. It's not just because uh, one can hold the camera; it's rather because they yeah. protect each other. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So he managed to pass. Nomi now is passing. Naomi is Passing. And now they are almost uh, there to show you our beautiful detector. The most exciting part of the visit starts now. With the starts cover. now, exactly. <laughs> we have to have uh, like a, a music, like. A <laughs> and, 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 well, and I can <laughs> say ba 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 ba. Even. 
Voila. Yeah. And they are in. <laughs> Actually, probably you realize that they, they got through a chicane. Yes. They had to turn twice. It's because of the, the radiation. The, exactly. the gamma will not get through. And the, the neutron is also reused and reduced. as well as the exactly. will not get through. Exactly. Exactly. So, so yes, here oh, yeah, is our ahead. detector. So at first I wanted to show you something. I don't know if you can see it from here. See this silver beam pipe there? This is where the proton is passing. So you can imagine all of this detector just for this a beam yeah. of proton and the collision is happening. Yep. Here, I don't know. Let's if just you call it LHC. This. <laughs> yes, the LHC. So yeah, this is our CMS detector. As for sure, Haifa was explaining to you, is about like onion structure. You have several detectors inside, and each detector is dedicated for certain type of particles. Start from muon system, which is the outer outermost layer or outermost detectors. The muon is the heavier version of electrons. And then we have the magnet, which the solenoid, this one. And the magnet here, we passing uh, a helium, liquid helium at 4.2 Kelvin to reach the superconductivity. Okay. By and uh, allow around the 18,000 of ampere current to reach the, the, the superconductivity and reach super magnet. And it will produce around 3.2 eight tesla so it's like four times the air and then we have another detector i don't know if you can see it from here or not which is called the kilometers and the kilometer is dedicated or specialized to detect the particle like electrons or photons and measuring the energy and we have another particle but you may you mainly heard about the jets it's a pion and kaon but it's okay if you didn't hear before and then we have a, a, a very important kind of sub detector, which uses it to tracing the electric charge. What would be this important? Because by tracing the electric charge, you can measure a very important feature of the particle with a momentum. Okay, once you reach them, once you measure the momentum of the particle, then you can identify many features else like the angles and then you can Mohammed, let me map. share let me share exactly. this screen yes that allows you so uh, yeah thank you zoltan for sharing the screen so now we see better because um this is one wedge of the detector that you saw exactly and you can yeah. see that the first part on the left is um the silicon tracker is so it's used uh, to track the particle and actually to um, to measure, I mean, it's used with uh, with uh, together with the superconducting solenoid to be able to measure the momentum of the particle. So as you can see, the curvature of the track here on the tracker, this is the curvature that will allow us to measure the momentum of the of the of the particle and also the charge of the particle. Okay, if uh, there is no track in the tracker system and it goes directly to the electromagnetic calorimeter, then uh, this particle has no charge and probably it will be uh, a photon particle. Okay, so you can see that this green part here is the electromagnetic part. Then uh, we have this uh, yellow part here is the hadron calorimeter. Uh, calorimeter. So basically, the hadronic calorimeter here is uh, dedicated to detect uh, hadrons. Okay, so the hadrons, for example, imagine that you have a pion, a neutral pion. The neutral pion will not leave any track in the tra uh, any um, track because it's not a charged particle in the silicon tracker, and it will deposit all its energy in the hadron calorimeter. Okay, but however, imagine if you have a charged pion plus or minus and it will cross the tracker and the calorimeters so it will leave a track in the silicon tracker but also will leave a deposit energy in the hadronic calorimeter and the combination of the two information will let us conclude that this is a charged hadron okay so um after the hadron calorimeter here you can see the superconducting solenoid here and then after the superconducting solenoid, you can see that we have the muon chambers 
and they are uh, uh, they are um, uh, layer by layer. We have an iron layer, then we have muon uh, chambers, which are mainly RPC and uh, DT uh, uh, DT chambers uh, together with RPC, right? In the barrel. Exactly in the barrel. While while in the end cap, uh, there are some more CSC exactly. and gems. Exactly CSC and gem together with RPC. Together with the RPC. Exactly. The RPC is the timing detector. Exactly. That's that's a very important uh, detector trigger. to know uh, that something happened that takes part in the trigger as well. Exactly. Um, therefore, it uh, they have, I think, six hundred chambers. Of the, yes. The, they Too have many. far more. They, yeah. Far more yeah. than the others. Yeah. I have one question. Yes. Go yes. ahead. Yes. Uh, as I know, the, and the Atlas and CMS detectors are constructed for the search of. Higgs boson and the particles which predicted by supersymmetric theories. Yes. And yeah. the, my question is the what is the difference between Atlas and the CMS detectors in, in the structure? Uh, in... May I answer this yes, question? Yes, go ahead. So, go. Thanks for the question. So, so actually, the two detectors were built independently from each other, and the the main common thing what we want to know uh, what we want to measure is the momentum of the muons if you measure the momentum as uh, mohammed and haifa already told you measure the deflection of the of the the path and you want to measure the curvature in order to to measure the curvature you you have to have a decent deflection because if it is just a very small part, then you cannot fit a circle, you cannot fit a helix uh, correctly. So you want to do this. How do you do this? You have two choices. One is to, to put the, the particle in a strong magnetic field, just like CMS. And in this case, in the strong magnetic field, you have a decent deflection, or you let it fly in a much lower uh, uh, field. The atlas chosen that way, we've chosen this way. The atlas, since it, it, it has to have a huge volume in order to get a decent deflection, uh, it is, it is, it is a, uh, uh, they have to use beams, uh, I mean, uh, metallic beams to keep the detector together. And these mainly iron or, or, or steel beams, uh, they form the magnetic field. Actually, their magnetic field is more complex than ours. They, they use not just solenoidal field, but toroidal field in order to have two measurements. Uh, so they have a very complex field. Of course, they measure this field from point to point in order to calculate the correct uh, uh, curvature of the, the particle path. But, uh, but of course, this, that there is a limit to the precision of, of understanding uh, the, the field. Uh, they have a very good measurement. They have a very good, therefore, a very good muon spectrometer. But of course, their systematic error on the, the momentum measurement is dominated by the, this, uh, this limit of the, of the measurement of the magnetic field. That changes from point to point. In CMS, what we've chosen, that Inside the solenoid, we have a quite homogeneous 3.8 Tesla field. Outside the solenoid, we use these metallic slabs, exactly. iron slabs, to confine the magnetic field. We confine more than 90, 99% of the field. And this metallic structure is constructed such a way that we, uh, that we, we, we create a saturation field, so very close to the saturation field of the iron, which is somewhere around two Tesla, we create a quite a quasi homogeneous field there. So the muon chambers are in a homogeneous field. So that means that by physics, we know the magnetic field. Of course, we measure as well, but, but we, we know the, the magnetic field. And in this case, this, uh, in our case, it is not the knowledge of the field from point to point that, that limits the, uh, the, the systematic error. However, in our case, we have another dominant uh, 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 thing. Yeah. Since we have a huge amount of material, the, the CMS weight is dominated by these irons. So you can imagine that we have several thousands of tons of iron there. 
uh, which means that 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 is a that is a chance that the muon during its flight just encounters a, a, an iron uh, nuclei and in this case it slightly changes its yes. direction of course it's not, not 90 degrees it's a, just just a very slight change but but this creates a systematic error yeah. on the, the the momentum measurement however if both the, the two detectors where there are two dominant systematic error uh, channels measure the same uh, for momentum for, for uh, uh, momentum of, of the four muons and it happens to be 127 uh, 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 GeV. That means that we measure the Higgs to the same mass or any other particle. We can be sure that the measurement is not uh, 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 biased by the uh, by the, the systematic errors. And this is this is one of the this is the easiest explainable difference between the two detectors. Of course, there are several others. The calorimeters are different. The, the, uh, the, the structure of the tracker is different, etc. cetera. Uh, but uh, what is very important that we try to make different systematic errors on the measurements. And if despite to this, we get the same result, we can be sure that what we measure is not an artifact. Yes. That's why we do need at least two detectors. Yes, confirm. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much, Zotan, for this uh, very, very nice and uh, constructive discussion. Water, yeah. <laughs> yes, but, but, but it was very constructive, really. Thank Can we you ask another question, please? Yes, yeah, yes go ahead. please, go ahead. Uh, considering the complexity and how many parts are involved in yeah. all of this, how often do you have uh, stoppages due to like beam breakdown or some detector that uh, suddenly stopped working? And how long does it, off, uh, does it usually take to solve these problems? May I ask again? Yeah, may yeah, may I answer ahead. again? I, <laughs> Please. So this is a unique system. If you look at the LHC, that's a unique system. If you look at any of the detectors, they are unique systems. Okay. So they are completely different from, let's say, the car industry where you have uh, several hundreds of thousands or even millions of the same type of car produced, where uh, um, these uh, problems can be mitigated. In our, in our case, if we get a major problem, we have to stop. However, uh, concerning the detector channels, uh, we, can, we can allow some detector parts not to work. Okay. What is important that that if we know a problem with the detector, that should be propagated through to the uh, to the simulation, exactly. because that might create again a, a systematic error on the measurements, and we can we can exclude them if we, if if our Monte Carlo simulations know about these detector channel problems. Um, how often do we mitigate the problems? Uh, of course, there are there are different sources. So if if a detector electronics is uh, uh, fails outside the detector, then it's then it's probably easy to change. If it is in this uh, uh, the service cavern, then of course we can go down at any time. If it is in the the experimental cavern, we have to wait for the next uh, uh, beam stop, which exactly. is in in several hours. So that that can be that can be done. If it is inside the detector, of course we have to open the detector uh, during the run to. We, every year we open the detector, indeed. We do not plan to open completely the detector during run three. The end caps will be opened. That means the, the end cap plates, except the, the innermost one uh, that we do not plan to open. But of course, it depends on the, the emerging uh, Situation. uh, situations. Concerning the LHC, uh, the situation is very similar. So if they have a major issue, then they stop. If they can wait with the, with the problem solving until the next beam stop, then in a couple of hours, they can access the, the part. Obviously, depending on the radiation environment, they uh, displace uh, the LHC quite yeah. much. Um, however, in every six weeks, six to 10 weeks, they, they have a three days off during run. Uh, that's a that's a normal technical stop. Then uh, then uh, these uh, problem solvings can be done, uh, 
and every year end we stop for for a couple of months then even more uh, problem solving can be done and there are these famous long shutdowns exactly. that happen every three to five years then uh, not just the maintenance but as well as the development can exactly. go on even both for the detectors and the accelerator it's like what we have now uh, what year. we are what we are finishing now fortunately exactly. actually this was a very long shutdown we didn't didn't expect it to last so long but, uh, but uh, due to the covid it took exactly. uh, uh, took one year longer indeed so yeah now we are now yeah. we are finishing closing up the detector and hopefully exactly get round get round by the beginning of next year of next year exactly thank you again uh, Zoltan <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much yeah I com completed what Zoltan was saying about the closing so for sure as the uh, Haifa was explaining to you we have two parts of the detector in the cab and barrel okay and then the cab we have two in the cab one minus and negative from both sides and the barrel which is in the middle. So you can see, I don't know if you see it before or not, but you can see from here, the end cab is already closed. And the next time will be open again, I think after three years or so. So we are in just in milestone minutes, moment right now. And yeah, this is the barrel. And you can see that we can move. Yeah, this part we are going to open this, uh, this the uh, between these two end caps. Yes. Yeah. Um, maybe you know, maybe there what you are showing, yeah. uh, because we are going to to install the, the so-called gem GE two ones. Yeah. And yeah. this will happen during one of the one of these uh, year end stops. Yes, as we say. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go down now to show you something very yes. special. Yeah. And maybe, maybe Haifa will take over. Yeah. And it down. So due okay. to this closing works, uh, we were asked to to keep off from the positive end where you are at this moment, but you can walk on the negative. Negative. On this, yeah. on, on on X one. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Mohammed is heading now. Uh, and the uh, to, to the to the level zero right is going down. Or? Uh, X one. X one. Not to X okay. zero. Okay. 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 <laughs> X one. Yes. Sorry. So yeah, um, at the same time, maybe we can uh, put again the, the detector uh, so I can show the, the mirror how it Oh travels. yes, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, the detection, this one. Mm, exactly, so okay. we, we just uh, discussed about the calorimeters, but uh, the mirror chambers, you can see that they are at the end just because the mirror actually, it travels all the detector and it doesn't stop. And therefore we can detect it at the end of the, of the layers here, as you can see. And uh, we discussed it with Sultan in uh, in, uh, in uh, a few minutes ago. Sorry. So yes. So basically, you can see that the structure of the detector is a full technology and uh, really complete. We have the tracker, we have the calorimeters to the to, to for the energy deposit. We have the solenoid and we have several uh, muon chambers, uh, which is actually. Uh, full and complete technology, right? Mm -hmm. So we detect uh, really uh, everything. I think yes. I give them back that, that picture because that's very interesting. Yes. So hi, it's me again. So as was Zoltan and me and Ahifa was saying, we are moving this part. So you can imagine that the full CMS can be moved. But how yeah. we can move this all this part of whether in the cab or ballot? We have a very, very tricky operation so this we called orange feet which we compressed the air to the ground and we can allow us to raise up the detector a bit and then we can we don't have a friction anymore and then we can move it okay this is like a this craft way yes. yes see and i think they are in the process now to move i don't know no, the, no, not this, not this other, end, not this not, end. No. On the other end, we do. On the but other end, we were asked not to move there, exactly for safety reasons. Uh, this so, this end is going to be closed, I think, uh, starting tomorrow probably, and uh, we will finish by the beginning of next week. Yeah. Yep. And Naomi has another trick to show it to you. And see, this is a normal paper clip. You can buy it from. Any shop, right? Oh, oh. 
What? Voila. <laughs> how is it possible? Maybe the question now, how many paper clips Naomi can stick together? <laughs> Maybe Haifa also can guess. Uh, I think I think that's, ah, that's the maximum. I think this is the maximum. That's the maximum, probably. Uh, oh yeah, yes, exactly. that one is when. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I've most... seen it so many times. <laughs> yes. So, so the magnet yeah, yeah. is off. The magnet is off. Exactly. Otherwise, it would close the detector itself. Yeah. Uh, in an uncontrolled way. Um, what we see now is the remanent field in 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 the the, the iron mm. slabs. Uh, this yes. is very this is very nice to show to the to the audience the but audience. actually actually you see that this is a kind of a plateau where one could put on the computer its computer when when, when testing the hardware i i really like these plateaus this is very convenient for me the only problem is that it turns off my computer yeah. screen yeah <laughs> <laughs> and this and this iron is not is not a magnet this this place is iron that's not a magnet at all, but the residual magnetic field exactly. which is coming from our from the lock. from the from the iron. Yeah. Actually, the yeah. iron gets magnetized a little bit yeah, um, from our magnetic. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Uh, but uh, when no. we turn on the magnet in a couple of weeks, uh, we are going to be able to visit this cavern. We are just discussing it with the technical coordination. Okay. And that will be quite interesting because that Indeed. that time you would see the the stray field yeah. instead, and uh, mm -hmm. we can demonstrate it not only with the paper clips but rather yeah. with wrenches. So <laughs> we have the test wrench for that, <laughs> the spanner. Yeah, so that would be really interesting. I mean, if we uh, can do that. Yeah, that's that's really a wrestling machine. Then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, can we have another question? Considering yes, the ahead. giant size, how do you check alignment? How do you like calibrate yeah. the position mm, of the detectors? Thank you, thank yeah. you very much. I'm yeah. I'm from the Mion alignment. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, actually, there are several different devices. For the Muon barrel, uh, we use uh, a hardware alignment that you might see on the picture in the top left corner. Uh, this is based on pre-calibrated. Uh, uh, optogeometrical bodies that are uh, installed on the muon chambers. And these optogeometrical bodies are watched with uh, calibrated objects, cameras on, on uh, calibrated uh, carbon fiber structures. And uh, from this, we can reconstruct the, we can reconstruct the chamber positions. Yes. Uh, we don't have such a system on the on the end caps. We had something a laser beam uh, system, but uh, actually the the barrel system that uh, that is still active. Uh, on the other hand, we can use uh, 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 cosmic muons, and we do use them. And the cosmic muons uh, uh, can, as as they penetrate through the the detector, we can measure the detector positions. On uh, based on them, of course, this inherits all the tracking algorithms bugs. So definitely, we do need a hardware system in order to limit the the the, the uh, track based system as well. Exactly. Well, actually, the track based is what what gives the reconstruction alignment. The the hardware systems are really like a a, a life insurance. Indeed. Just <coughs> another, additional... another short question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, go ahead. Go yes, ahead. Go ahead. And concerning those cosmic muons that you mentioned, what is the thickness of the rock above the detector? What is the thickness of? Of the rock. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Above the detector, you mean? That's about one hundred meters. Yeah, above the detector. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's about one hundred meters. So we can still have a few cosmic muons. Of course, not the same fluent at the as, as on the surface but we that that they still can go through yeah. uh, and also we we use this is this is for the barrel system mainly because they are they are perpendicular to the to the beam direction the the end cap system you see they are more or less parallel with the with the cosmic muons for their uh, uh, alignment we use the so-called beam halo 
uh, the particles that that go parallel with the beam. Just say good morning. Hi. Uh, uh, so that, that go parallel with the with the beam. So during the test beam, we are going to have uh, uh, that alignment done. Well, if I may, to interrupt as a comment on the question, which is very good. So another question to the audience: If you already know what is the cosmic means, the cosmic means is coming from outside. Okay. So how to differentiate between a cosmic mayon and the mayon coming from the interaction point? Do we have an answer? By reconstructing the trajectories. And then what is, would be the main difference between the cosmic coming out from outside and the cosmic coming from the interaction point? Should it, uh, shouldn't it be done like on the trigger level, like you showed us earlier? Yeah, it would be at the trigger level, but the main difference would be the direction. So imagine and the timing is, and the and timing. timing. Yes. yes. <laughs> so imagine the cosmics is coming from outside to enter in the barrel, which we are seeing right now. Okay. So the direction of the mion in this direction, which is the cosmics. But the mion is coming from the interaction point will go in this direction. So by trigger system, it can be easily to differentiate between this cos this mion and this mion. But another question will be, so how about if the mion from the interaction point coming in the direction and the cosmic also coming in the direction? At that point, we are tracing the track of the mion. If we found there is track of the mion coming from above barrel to downside. So this cosmic one is continuous. But if the mean coming from the interaction point, so this is not the cosmic and this is coming, this mean coming from the real uh, interaction process. So has, and also the time for sure, but mainly that's how we differentiate between the cosmic mean and the mean coming from interaction. I will go around now. Yeah, what um, I would yes. encourage is uh, or, or rather the questions. Yeah. Um, yes. Maybe Mohammed, you can show the shaft as well. Oh yeah. Where we yes. Exactly. Okay, I will so, show. Yeah, you yeah. can see so, there's a shaft here. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, that's where we, we use were the. Yeah. Yes. And you want the to talk about it? Yeah, well, actually, yes, we can we can talk about. So uh, the detector was built on the surface exactly for not just because we can do that, uh, but what, the the indication for that was rather that the the civil engineering work to build the cavern took so long that we could not afford uh, waiting yeah, for to, to wait for the these works complete. Therefore, we built up the detector on the surface. We checked the tested the magnet exactly. in 2006 and then we started to lower the size detector size parts size. 13 big detector parts the the lightest was i think uh, 800 tons and the 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 heaviest was 2200 tons yeah. of course that was the middle part together with yes. the with the magnet <clears throat> and during lowering uh, we didn't have too much space you know if if you would hang this kind of object that would start to swing. Yeah. Uh, we had to minimize the swing to less than 10 centimeters because the shaft is just something this size bigger than the detectors. Uh, 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 yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, this was also because this kind of thing, I mean, the vertical shaft is extremely expensive. We couldn't afford to make yeah, it meters big. bigger. Yes. Um, that also holds for the underground cavern. We only have a 53 meter long underground ex experimental cavern. We cannot open the experiment such a way that, that all the parts are accessible at the same time. We have to play with this again, just because of this, uh, this uh, uh, um, price yes. issue. So we had to keep it in a, in, at an acceptable exactly. uh, level. Um, <clears throat> Yes, exactly. So that's that's what I wanted to say. Is there any questions uh, before I would allow the exactly. the guys to leave the experimental cavern and join us on the surface? 
Don't hesitate to ask a question. But no any other questions right now, but uh, this is this has been an amazing experiment uh, experience, but we are very short on schedule. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, in that case, I would I would ask the underground team to 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 leave the uh, the underground yes. experimental so cavern and join us on the surface for the for the recap. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are coming now. Yeah. Okay. So in Thank the meantime, you. if if any questions uh, come in, right. we try to answer yep. with Haifa, and so, you will see the the other access to the to the experimental yeah. cavern. So Obviously, for safety outside. reasons, we must have more than one. Indeed. So he is leaving now from the other side. Yeah. Again, a chicane. Exactly. And you can see that uh, uh, we have the cables, the great cables on the on the top. Uh, there's our um, the, the that's cable. our connection. Exactly. <laughs> this is our connection. This is how we have connection on the meter and the ground. This is and, called uh, the, the technology and the 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 trademark of this is called exactly. leaky feeder so that's an antenna that's that's a a, a a wave conductor that can leak out some some of the the power yeah. and that makes uh, our antenna underground uh wireless antenna. exactly so he left now you can see he, left, he went out from the yellow door yeah and he went and they they just found the same elevator exactly and as soon as noemi is out they will yeah they will come in. you might see the footprints on the on the, the floor this elevator is COVID. is validated for 32 people but due to the covid only five can travel at the, exactly. at the time to keep the distance safe yeah. distance. Uh, these are the schedule things these are quite important i, I think this is probably not the best view uh, but uh, you might imagine we have a very complicated device with hundreds of tasks to be done, maybe yeah. thousands of tasks to be done during the long shutdown. And some of these tasks can interfere with each other. So we had, uh, we had a huge effort on scheduling all the, the possible works for these two weeks, yeah. two, two years. And uh, we have a team who is responsible for maintaining the schedule and of course, this is kind of a bullet, uh, kind of a, a bulletin board uh, where we 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 show it up. Actually, every morning, every workday, every morning at eight thirty, we have the daily meeting yeah. on the scheduling and the works. Yeah. Uh, every week, we have twice uh, a bigger view, make a bigger view on the detector status yeah. and and the the schedules. So this this should be. Uh, this should be controlled and handled very tightly. Otherwise, uh, we would not be able to to work. To work exactly. So, so now they are back on they surface. They are back on the surface. They are leaving, and in few, in a couple of minutes, they will be next to us. Yeah. As you see, there is a traffic there. Yeah. People are, are getting working. through. Yeah, we have to wait a bit. Yeah, no. I think now it's your turn. Yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Again, we have again to the CMS <laughs> picture. Yeah, I think this is this is a very very important and a very nice. Oh yeah, yeah I was <laughs> that was me. <laughs> This is 20 Zoltan. kilos younger <laughs> and, and a bit more hair than today I have. <laughs> so Zoltan and Naomi complete the same picture. Well, actually, we were lucky. The guy who made it <laughs> well, Michael, is, is, is a friend, yeah. Michael. Yeah, Michael. he's a friend yeah. of ours. So, so. <laughs> that was the reason being in the in the middle and nothing else. <laughs> 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 you always have to know the correct people, the exact ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they are back on surface. Hello. Hey. Uh, so what I would propose uh, to our Kazakh partners is to to make a wrap up.
Uh, in the meantime, I'm just just connecting Mohammed yeah. back on one and another the chair, headset. Just like a chair. Yeah, yeah, I I just pushed it out from the way. Hello, it's me again. Okay, so if you have any more questions, please uh, please ask now. I think there will be no more questions. Okay. Then in, then in this case, I would, I would uh, like to thank you for joining us today. Indeed. Thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the visit today. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. Very good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I Happy hope to we continue it. soon. Exactly. Uh, Indeed. Yeah, and I hope <laughs> to wish to see you all of all of you here. Exactly. Yeah. And, and physically <laughs> as well. <laughs> physically, yes. Thank you very much. You uh, can, can, just just quick question concerning yeah. the record recording of this virtual tour. Is it will it be available for yes, us? Yes, uh, I I have to have a, a little bit of a post processing now yeah. that I'm going to start as soon as uh, we stop the 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 event. And in uh, two, three hours, this will show up in, on, on our uh, YouTube channel. I will inform you via email as well, there? and also add the link to the Indico page of the, of the event. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks to you. Thanks. It was nice to meet Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Are you I don't touch anything. <laughs>